Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some products from Honeybee Stamps, mostly these um, shaker potion bottles. I'm also using the, I think it's the Love Labels and then the Rainbow. We're going to be working with some alcohol links today uh, in two different ways. So we're going to be applying it to Yupo, which is pretty traditional, and then also applying it to acetate to make two different styles of shaker cards, um, just depending on you know, what kind of look you're going for. So I've picked out a rainbow of colors here. I have a little pipette to apply my alcohol if need be, and then also the little air blower. Uh, you can use the, what do they call it? The medium alcohol mixing medium. Mm, you can use that. I'm just using regular alcohol. I can't think of what it's called and I'm not sure why I can't think of it. But anywho, um, and then I'm just going to work from top to bottom, putting down a rainbow of colors. You, of course, can do whatever colors you would like. I chose specifically to use the rainbow of colors because I wanted to use the sentiments from the little rainbow set. So I'm just putting down a couple of different colors right into that alcohol. And I do have a pretty decent amount. It's going to make a total mess, um, but it does clean up. I mean, if you leave it sit there, it will stain, but it cleaned up with just a wet rag and some alcohol. But once I put down a couple of colors, then I kind of move them together um, with the blower so that they don't dry where they're seated. I don't want them to dry in those little droplets. And I try to blow around the colors that will like once I come to an end that of the ones that will work together. So I did the red, orange, and yellow, and then added some air to move it around before I got into like the green, which is red's complementary color. Then I did the green and teal together, and then I'm going to do the blue, purple, and pink together because um, those all work really nicely. And obviously at the end of it, they're all going to be kind of mixed together anyway, but I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to be blowing green up into my red or pink up into my green. You get what I'm saying. And then just to fill in that little bit of a gap that I have at the bottom, I'm going to go back to the red, which I actually think is called watermelon. Um, and then that way I have my full rainbow. Now the one on the left hand side, which is on the Yupo, is much brighter, but that's because it's on a white base where the one on the right here is on the clear acetate. You can see my desk right through it, right? Um, so that one is not going to be as bold without something behind it um, that's solid. So here I let them sit there and I let them dry. I cleaned up my desk around it. And then we're going to move on to the die cutting portion. Now I had this idea a really long time ago. Like I'm just going to be real with you. I had this idea a really long time ago and I just never did anything with it. And now they're being retired. And so I had to make a move. We'll come back to the retirement in just a minute. So for the transparency ones, we want to use the full size cutout. Um, not the frame portion, the, the back portion. So I'm going to cut out two of the larger ones and then one of each of the smaller ones. For the Yupo side, I'm going to cut those using the frames. Um, and it'll make sense once we get to putting the two together and why it's different. Um, for the one with the acetate, I did flip it over so that the color was on the back. Um, and obviously you can still see it because it's see-through, but I did flip it over so that way the color would be on the inside of my shaker and not on the outside of my shaker. Um, and that was just to make sure that, you know, none of the color transferred. It's not going to transfer to your hands or anything like that, but if you put tape on it, it will pull it off. Um, and I didn't obviously taping my <laughs> dies in place, I did not want to run the risk that I was going to pull off that color, which is going to shade my little bottles. Um, so yeah, for the frame pieces, I'm also going to cut out um, the four, same four pieces out of vellum. Um, and this is just, it, you don't need any special vellum, like you don't need heavyweight or anything like that. Just regular vellum will be fine. And then the Bottles have little um, like stoppers. I cut those out of black and then they have um, 
the medium sized one has like a little glass ball. The other two have corks. And so I'm using craft cardstock and um, the little ball I cut out of vellum as well. In addition to that, because I want them to be shakers, I also cut out four extra pieces of the frame. You, I felt like I needed at least four to get some movement. You could even do more. You can also do these like a traditional shaker with foam tape. I just thought it would be easier to do it this way. So that's why I chose to go that route. And then what we want to do, these pieces will all be individual shakers. So you could put them on tags if you wanted. Um, you know, they do also have Halloween. That's when they originally came out with them. They had Halloween um, tags as well. I did not chose I did not choose to use those this time around. So I put down one of the frames and then I'm going to fit in the center of the Upo one. And then I'm just going to keep stacking those frames up around it. It's easier to put the center down when it's just set inside one than to try and force it in when you already have all four of yours built up. So that's why you want to go ahead and do it in the beginning and get it out of the way. And then we're just going to continue stacking those. And this is what is going to give us the basis for our little shaker bottles. Um, I love these little potions. I did another video. They have two... Yeah, they have two little potion bottles um, that are stamp sets. One is like a little, they look like little perfume bottles, which were so cute. And then another one was the one that they released for Halloween and um, they're being retired as well. So I tried, my go-to was liquid glue. I tried that with attaching um, the clear piece of acetate to the... Um, the Yupo paper, and it wouldn't stay. So that clear acetate, that window, is also cut out of the full back piece. Um, so the Yupo, and then four white frames, and then you need one solid white piece, one solid clear piece, um, and then you also need a frame out of the vellum. So I am, instead of using the liquid adhesive, I am going to use Honeybee's um, like tear tape. I was having a hard time tearing it in the beginning because I still had the liquid glue, so it was kind of like sliding off as I was trying to tear it. Uh, that was not the case as I continued once the glue dried. So you can go through and tear it or cut it as you need to, but you don't have to because it is so thin. You can just kind of peel off the backer as you need and just rotate the whole tape strip around your entire piece, which is honestly what I ended up doing. Because not only do I have to do this to get the Yupo to adhere to the acetate, I have to do this to get the acetate to adhere to my cardstock um, to seal in my little shaker bits. So um, since I had to do it twice, I found it easiest to not even bother to tear it and just work it all the way around the entire um, shape. I had such a hard time and it's so funny because I put together so many of these and this was the first one. Like, why would I do the first one on camera? Who knows, Kelly? Why Why would you do that to yourself? Um, but I had such a hard time lining it up. And it actually turns out it's much easier to line up from the bottom. So for the rest of them, that's pretty much how I did it. <laughs> um, so here you'll see like these will sit one on top of the other. And here is why I chose to cut them in the frame um, is because... I needed the color underneath the vellum to make it look like a frosted bottle. And so that is why I chose to cut them with the frame. So now let's talk about the shaker bits. I will link anything um, in the description that I possibly can that's still being sold. But honestly, I didn't go through my drawer looking for things to sell you. I went through my drawer looking for colors that match my project. So really any shaker bits that you have will work. I did choose to use smaller ones. Um, so I have more flat confettis versus, um, you know, full on sequins. I also don't have any rhinestones or like baubles in here. I, I just don't have enough real estate. Now you could stack up your frames to be thicker to make room for those. I just chose not to. Um, and so for like this one, I put in some red confetti, some orange, and some yellow. Um, 
and I made sure that I went in and really spread it out because again, I don't have a lot of thickness here. So once I have my shaker bits in, we're going to need to seal that up. So we're going to get more of that um, kind of tear tape. And again, I am just going to kind of fold this and work this around the edges. Um, I didn't have any issues with the sticking. It is a very strong adhesive um, and it seemed to hold in all of the things. I will say that you have to make sure that you really, really push everything down because when you cut through that acetate, whether it's the piece that we added the alcohol ink to, or in this case, the clear window, it does tend to warp just a little bit. So I would get it kind of set up at the bottom, and then I found it easiest to hold it in my hands to make sure that everything was lined up at the top, and then I pushed everything down to really seal it around the sides. And as you can see, I am just shake, shake, shaking away. And now here is that kind of frosted glass look. So you can see the full color in the middle and then another, like a lighter version of it when you put the vellum over top of it. But first I have to figure out my stopper piece. So I still want, you can see that little cork sticks out underneath the little stopper. And I still want you to be able to see that through the frosted glass. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of color to these just with some Copic markers. I ended up using an E55 and an E57. Um, and then here I'm laying everything in place just so I can kind of mark how high I need my shadow to go up to. Once I did a few of these, I got a little bit more comfortable with just eyeballing it. And then um, this, the little cork has some embossed detail. So I added the little dots of darker color to that as well. And then I'm going to adhere my stopper to my cork. Um, this would have been easier to, honestly, it would have been easier to do if I would have used the stopper to mark where I needed to cut it. And that is what I did for the rest of them. But here I marked it with my fingernail and I eyeballed it. And guess what? That also worked. <laughs> so whichever way you <laughs> would like to do it, um, I found it much easier to just mark the little vellum with a pencil, like why I would line everything up and put the stopper in place. And then I would just um, mark it with a pencil and then trim it off. And that was honestly way, way easier. But here you see, I can still slide the little cork underneath the frosted portion so you can see it both inside the bottle and outside the bottle, which would be on top. Now we all know when it comes to adhering vellum that you'll be able to see any adhesive that you put behind it. So when I added my vellum, I added my uh, adhesive in a very strategic way. <laughs> and that was kind of in dots. Um, so you're gonna see, I'm going to like dot it on the corners and then I'm just doing dots kind of up opposite side like caddy corner from each other all around the edges and this is going to create clear spots that we can see through that will look like the shaker bits pushed up against the glass that is the game plan with that because I knew there was going to be no way to hide the adhesive like you were going to be able to see it because it's my utmost top layer but uh, I think it ended up working okay with the little with the little polka dots so that is one completed now let's do the other one this is the one that has the colored acetate and everything is the same. We're going to build up those four layers, um, except this time we're going to have a white background because all of our color is added um, with the acetate that sits on top that's already colored. So while I'm doing this, let me just tell you. So we were talking about the retirement. Honeybee, I mentioned it in the video that I put up the other day. Honeybee is having a retirement sale. So everything in their sale section obviously is on sale. Um, but this weekend through today, through the 21st, they're offering an additional 20% off. There's no code needed. Um, so these dyes, which you guys know how pricey dyes normally are, these dyes that I'm using right here are $12, um, which is really a great deal on dyes. Um, but it's not just, I mean, they're getting, they did really bulk up their retirement. There's a lot that's going. I've been with Honeybee a long time. Um, and so there's a lot of... <laughs> 
<laughs> there's a lot of sets that I really loved working with that are going, which I, I understand. You know, there's always new stuff coming out and they can't house everything. And I, I totally get it. Um, but I wanted to make sure, especially I love the little potion jars that I wanted to use these before they went. Um, but what I was going to say was there's not just stamps and um, stencils and things like that, though there are. There's like stencils for a buck. But anyway, there's also... Honeybee sells a lot of other things. So there's envelopes um, that are on sale. There's, I think I saw colored pencils in there. Um, there's just lots of other things that they carry that are sometimes also end up in those sale sections, um, which, I mean, if you're on a budget, like I definitely have been, um, that's a great time to pick up those kinds of things. Or if there's a new medium that you want to try, look to see if it's in there. Um, so yeah, th those are just some things. So that's going on through the rest of today. Um, if you want to head over there and check that out. And then um, at the time that I am posting this, uh, the potion bottles, whether it was the stamps or these um, shaker bottles here, um, they were still in stock. But if, let's say, you're watching this video a year from now because you just really love the, the look of an alcohol ink shaker, um, you don't need what the, you don't need these. You don't need a specific shaker die set, though they are out there and they do make it easier. I'm not going to pretend like they don't because you have, you know, a base layer and then the frame layer that, that match. Um, you can actually do this with almost any um, stacking die. So, you know, like Hero Arts has infinity dies. Um, almost every company has some sort of stacking die where your shapes fit inside each other and you can create your own frames. Um, so you can do this with any of those where you can, you know, create a frame for a shape that you already have, um, which is fantastic. So I think I did this something similar with, um, trinities they had like really like a long i don't know what kind of triangle it is i'm sorry it wasn't a 90 degree triangle i'll tell you that um other than that that's where my uh geometry skills and shapes are geometry right right yeah okay so now you can see i can't math let's move on um but anyway, you can do this with any anything that will fit inside itself. There's another honeybee die um, that this would be great for, and I think it's the circle scapes, circle scapes shaker. What is this called? Let me look. You're probably gonna hear me rattling around in my craft disaster. Yeah, it's circle sca circle scapes shaker frames. Um, so that one has three different size circles that are intended for shakers. So. We just put those together, this last one, and nothing was different. Shaker bits and everything is the same. The only difference is the piece on top I cut out of gold just because I thought that would be fancy. Like they would be such fancy little uh, bottles in uh, gold. Here, I wanted to add the little labels directly onto the acetate. Now, you can stamp these before you put them on, but you do have to give them time to dry. And if you're going to stamp on acetate, you want um, something that's archival. This is stays on. Uh, this works really, really well. So for the first one that you saw me stamp, it says luck. And then the other, this one that I'm stamping now says birthday wishes. These are just really a kind of a fun way to do some add-ons. I also um, stamped two... Um, what are they? They're like little stars. They also have hearts in this set that are cute. Um, and then another one like with little uh, stardust. You can stamp them afterward or before. Just know that if you do it before, you have to give them a little bit of dry time. And if you do it after, you do run the risk that it's not going to be completely even. So off camera, I put together all of my bottles. And now here, I need a background to support my little rainbow jars. And I, this is like the laziest way to do a watercolor background. I'm not even kidding you. I did not want to take the time to do a bunch of ink smushing and trying to get this background um, just so. So what I did was I took two pieces of watercolor paper and I held my ink pads, my distressing pads at an angle so that I only was using just the side of it. And I'm going in the exact same rainbow order that I did my alcohol ink in. And I'm keeping it like closer to the bottom. So I, I chose to do one in landscape and one in portrait. And um, 
they both fit. It fits a little better on the uh, landscape one, but that's okay. So for the first one, I'm adding a bunch of clean water at the top. And then here is my problem. I should have just gone down and let the water do its thing, but I didn't. I started doing back and forth and you can see that it starts to get pretty muddy up top and I've added probably way too much water. Um, so it's really going to bleach out my colors. But since it's just a background and it's not the focal point, I'm not overly worried about it. I am, however, going to change my technique for the next one. I still added... Um, I still added water to the top, but instead of continually rinsing my brush, I just committed and I went all the way across, um, you know, just going up and down. I am going to blot off some of the extra water that's at the top. And then, of course, you know, because I have to, I just have to, I have to add the sparkles and to, to all the things. So here, um, this is, I'm just trying to maybe try to put some pink back in. It didn't really work. And then I did add some spatters of all of the colors into both of the backgrounds. I just very quickly smushed them down um, and then, you know, picked up some of the ink, splattered it onto the background. Once again, you know, the, the potion bottles take up so much room that you're not going to see all of this in its entirety. So I'm not overly concerned about it. These do end up being pretty thick cards, like cards that you would probably want to um, deliver in person, honestly. Uh, well, you know, I'm going to deliver them in person because I don't mail anything ever ever, ever. Um, but anywho, so here I'm put spattering on some perfect pearls for some shine in the background. And then I'm also going to do just clean water. And because we can never have enough splatters, spatters, whatever you want to call them, uh, I'm also going to do some Copic Opaque White. Um, and this is mostly dry at this point. So that opaque white is going to stay more solid. Um, same thing with the perfect pearls. If you want them to bloom out, you want to do it while it's wet. So for my sentiments, I chose uh, to kind of like bring that, the black from the stoppers to kind of bring that back in with my sentiments. So I'm doing some white heat embossing on black. I could have done gold for the one that had the gold bottles, but honestly, I had no idea which sentiment was going to go on which card yet. So I did white because it was safe. <laughs> so I treated it with my anti-static tool, and now I'm going to stamp it in our brilliant white pigment ink and then uh, white heat emboss it in um, white detail embossing powder. Uh, yeah, this has been, we, this has been super heavy instruction and we're almost through the whole video. So for those of you who came, um, the other night to support me on craft roulette, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you guys showing up and rooting for me. Um, it was not, I don't want to say it was as bad as the first time. The first time I got the color scheme of red, yellow, and purple, which was, uh, you know, blue is my boyfriend. Um, but for the, and then I got a tag as well, and I don't love tags. Um, but anywho, this time around, I got summer colors, which was fantastic. I was so excited for summer colors. And then everything very, very quickly went downhill. I got summer colors, and then I got good tidings. Um, which I was like, oh no, I'm about to have to make a Christmas card. Then I got mechanics or mechanical. Oh, uh, gut punch. It was so, I was like, no, 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 please no. Um, and then the fourth one was tie it on, which if you watch my videos, you know, you almost never see any sort of twine or anything like that because I don't ribbon. I don't like any of that stuff for the most part. Um, so I was up against it. I was on the struggle bus, uh, but I was able to complete a card. <laughs> I was able to complete a card. Is it my best work? Nope. Is it the worst card I ever made? Also, no. So I'm calling that a win. Um, and then uh, you can find that um, link over on the community page if you wanted to watch the replay. It's a long one, though. So get like drinks and popcorn because, you know, when you go on Craft Roulette, it's like an all night thing. 
Uh, and then they even do an after party afterward. Um, but they very, this is so cool. Very, very generously. They do super chats, which I did not know. Um, and they were like, you know, we'll split the money with you. And I was like, get out of here. Like, no, like, <laughs> you know, they run it themselves. It's a, it's, um, Mary and her son, Stephen, um, and I was like, no, I'm not going to take your dollars, people. So after the show, um, we were talking about it and they do like giveaways. They have really great sponsors. Um, and, you know, he was like, well, we want to give you your half of the money. And I was like, please, I don't, well, I don't want it. Um, the, I just, it, I don't know. I guess in my mind, like I don't need it and it's your show and you guys you know are putting in the work week after week like I'm not gonna take your dollars um but anyway so one of the winners um I think her name was Sylvia she actually uh Glassboard Studio which is what my glass mat is is Glassboard Studio I just have the custom one uh because I wanted to draw my own but anyway um she it's only for the U.S. because the shipping is so much. You guys overseas, man, I feel so terrible for you and the shipping prices. Um, but anywho, so they were like, you know, just claim your prize and we'll, you know, we'll try to work something out or whatever, um, which was nice. You know, they were trying to make sure that that she still got something, even if they couldn't send her the, you know, the glass mat. And... Um, then when we were talking about the money, Stephen was like, well, what if we used your half of the money to send her her glass mat? And I was like, yes, what a brilliant idea. I love that. Because um, he was saying that the shipping was like something like $70 or $75 or something like that the last time they had to ship one. Um, I cannot even imagine. I cannot. I just feel... I feel for y'all. That is, that's a rough go. Um, but anyway, they were lovely and it was, um, I mean, I probably won't do it for like another two. I was on it before, like two, I, well, I was on it when I was pregnant with Caitlin and she's two ish. So, um, yeah, I'm probably not going to do it again for another two ish years. Cause you really got to work yourself up for it. The wheel's not kind y'all. It's a mean, it's a mean old man. Um, so anyway, let's talk about finishing up this card. So as you can see, we had multiple layers of foam tape. I told you she's a thick girl. You're probably going to have to hand deliver her. And then I did actually use the gem stickers from the newest release. These are the Let's Party gem stickers. And I did blue on one and pink on another. This particular one was really bothering me because... I put too much foam tape on there because it wasn't sitting flush. It was sitting like up higher and it was totally unnecessary. The bottle did not need to be that high. So I actually ended up kind of pulling everything off and then going back to try to re-adhere it. So one piece was not enough. I had to do two to make it flush, but we did end up, we did end up getting there. Um, because there's, you know, these these shakers are a bit thicker. You could probably do one. You don't have to do four. I, I'm just crazy. But anywho, so these are both cards. I really love these potion bottles. I'm sorry to see them go. I think they're totally adorable. But nonetheless, you can use this technique for, for any, like I said, any kind of uh, frame shakers that you have. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.